Good morning. Good morning. This Mass is being streamed live, and for those of you who are watching from home, welcome. We're glad you could join us this morning. Today's Mass intentions are for Christine Chambers, whose birthday was yesterday. And also, I'd like to continue to pray for all our brothers and sisters who are sick, those who are in the hospitals, at homes, but also in the nursing homes, so that God may continue to guide them and give them strength and healing. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge your sins and ask for God's love and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, and to you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have felt, done and what, what I have I failed to do, through, through my fault, fault through my fault, through, 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 through my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, Therefore, I ask, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who gave the priest St. John an outstanding dedication to perfect self-denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate eternally your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Thus says the Lord, woe to the city, rebellious and polluted, to the tyrannical city. She hears no voice, accepts no correction. In the Lord she has not trusted, for her God she has not drawn near. For then I will change and purify the lips of the peoples, that all may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia and as far as the recesses of the north, they shall bring me offerings. On that day, you need not be ashamed of all your deeds, your rebellious actions against me. For then I will remove from your midst the proud braggarts, and you shall no longer exalt yourself on my holy mountain. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response will be, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one call out, called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The and Lord the hears the cry of the poor. The blessing, May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, to go and proclaim the good news. Amen. 
Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, O Lord, do not delay. Forgive the sins of your people. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man has two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son said in reply, I will not. But afterwards he changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of these two did the father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, the Gospel today challenges all of us because it affects our relationship with God and our brothers and sisters and both behaviors. We can have all of us in one way or another. Sometimes we say yes to God and sometimes we say no to God. And it was even challenged me. I remember the day when I was ordained in 1989, by Jennifer down, praying those litans of the saints. And then sometimes when uh, I, I don't fulfill my obligations, my duties as a priest, I have no difference with that young man who said no. And later he said, yes, let me do it. And Maybe sometimes like this one, say, oh, yes, I will do it. And actually, he didn't do anything. I want to share with you this typical example. When I was in Tanzania, there was one lady, her name is Joyce. She was a single mom. And one day, one lady came and said, Father, Joyce is, she's having relationship with my husband. And I've been trying to tell her, please, leave my husband. Joyce is saying, no, what is your problem? Eh? I'm not going to, to interact, to interfere you in your house. Let him come to me, and you continue with, with him. I called Joyce. I said, Joyce, I have received these uh, allegations. What do you say? She said, yes, he's my friend. And he has been supporting me. Because now I'm a single mom, I have three children, how am I going to make life? Because I need someone to help me. So I said, Joyce, put into your friend's life that woman, the one who is married, and be like herself. Did you do, you would have done the same thing? She said, no, so what am I going to do? It took time to convince Joyce that this was not the right direction. One day she came to me and said, Father, so what am I going to do? I said, no, leave this woman so that he, this man can continue with his relationship with his wife and take care of the children. And she said, how am I going to make life? That was another thing. So we started helping to see how are we going to support Joyce. And when we came to realize that Joyce, she was afraid of her own life and the children because this man was the supporter of her life. So from that day when we say, okay, let us extend our hands and support Joyce, that was the new beginning for Joyce to change her own life, from saying no to God and saying yes 
to God by accepting herself who she is. And from that day, we supported her, and Joyce came one day and said, Father, thank you for helping me to see and to ponder. And now I can see that I was not on the right direction. Dear friends, this time of Advent, the gospel brings us to our attention. Sometimes we say yes to save the Lord, but we don't continue to do that. And sometimes we say no, and then we come and reflect and say, mm, no, let me do. Change is inevitable. It has never been too late to experience God's mercy. And that's why this time of Advent, we are called ourselves to prepare for the coming of our Lord. Don't be stubborn. Let us be like Joyce, to open up ourselves and ask, how are we going to make a difference? Accept you who you are and ask you for help so that you may have the way through. Advent is the time of prayer. Advent is the time of preparation, and Advent is the time to bring us together. Let us make use of this time as we are approaching to celebrate Christmas. Christmas with love, Christmas with peace, but Christmas with the change of heart. I want to invite you on Monday at 7 p.m., come and join us for the sacrament of reconciliation. Amen. Please stand. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of life and for the gift of peace. And for this, we pray. We are like Joyce or the other sons who were different by the way they responded to your call. Give us courage always to humble ourselves and open our hearts. And for this, we pray. As we are approaching to celebrate Christmas, Lord, give us courage always to follow the footsteps of our mother Mary, who always reminds us, whatever he tells you, do it, to do with love and peace. And for this we pray. We pray for those who have lost their faith, so that this time of Advent, let us be aware of the moments for them, the moment of grace the moment of change, and for this we pray. We ask thee through Christ our Lord. Now let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the past 50 years. Your grace and spirit have enabled our parish to proclaim the word, celebrate the Eucharist, and save our local community. In thanksgiving, we pray for all those parishioners who set the parish foundation, and for all those who throughout the years have joined us in our mission, in our celebrations, or have sought our help. Please continue to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we will always be missionary disciples who are joyful expressions of your Son within our parish and into our community. We boldly proclaim that Jesus is alive in our parish, welcoming the lost and leading us all to new life in him. We ask thee through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer, Almighty God, in a commemoration of St. John of the Cross, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now enact through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to adopt in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. John of the Cross, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we are claimed. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the choice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that we have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, you are church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mary, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all have died on mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from evil, evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gracious grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, and the peace of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless are those called to the sap of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me, says the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, who in St. John have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. I want to say thank you for your participation and for your prayers. And for those who are watching live stream mass also, I want to say thank you for your prayers and for your participation. The days are numbered. Let us get prepared to welcome Jesus into our hearts and into our lives, but also into our relationship with one another. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Amen. Amen.